Welcome back everyone, uh, it's here. And today I've got some r slash best of for you all. As per usual, I'll be reading you the posts, giving you my opinions, and I hope you do the same down in the comments below. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. This thread was gathered by Choice Evidence 1983. Their tagline, Is it dawned on me that he was a wizard? Aunt broke my model kit, so I took away her everything. Original OP is Eren o Goku. Gu... Su? I don't know. It's this. Originally posted to r slash nuclear revenge. Aunt broke my model kit, so I took away her everything. Content warning for destruction of property and loss of cherished property. Editor's note, English is not OP's first language. Originally posted March 25th, 2024. This whole thing started exactly a year ago, but just ended. And a friend told me to post it here, so off we go. I live in Turkey, and as you know, southeast of my country was wrecked by a couple of giant earthquakes a year ago. My city was the epicenter, and while the house I lived with my family wasn't destroyed, a lot of shelves got knocked off and one of them was the one where I held my gumpla kits. Out of all the kits I had, only one survived, an MG the O that was heavily customized. I had built it with my grandfather who passed away a few years ago, so I was ecstatic it survived. A few months after everything had calmed down, my mother called her relatives for dinner, which included Aunt B. Not for… her name does start with the letter B. She came alongside her son, which is eight, and is an entitled brat. While the adults were drinking coffee, this little brat barged in my room and demanded to play with my computer, which I refused, since I was editing a video for College Society and had the camera on. Well, the brat went back crying to her mother, who came and started yelling at me. While I was dealing with her, her little brat climbed my desk and took my model kit, then immediately dropped it and stepped on it. The rest is just yelling. Me swearing them up and down and telling them they were going to pay for it with her calling me a weirdo for still having toys, and that she wasn't going to pay for My mother was at first not into making her pay to keep peace, but when she realized it was the kid I made with my late grandfather, her father, she was angrier than I was and went out for blood. We took the case to a friend of ours who's a lawyer that specializes with in-family cases, and they told us since my camera caught it all, we would definitely win but it was better to come to an agreement out of court in a settlement since it could be cheaper. I pulled out a price list of the kits I needed to make an exact replica of the one that was destroyed, and it came to just about 1,000 USD, which, you know, was about 25k to 27k TRY with the exchange rate. Well, she refused, so we took her to court. She pulled all kinds of bull to not pay and delay, but the judge ended up making her pay 1650 USD plus an order for her to pay any border taxes on the replacement kits alongside the court and lawyer fees. It completely f***ed her savings, and her husband, who was already waiting for a chance to divorce her, took it. When it all ended, she had nothing, and even lost her brat's custody to her ex-husband, and she not only lost the down payment she had for a house, she lost all her savings and didn't get alimony from her husband. Am I happy her life got completely f***ed? No, not really. Do I feel sorry it happened? None the slightest. She and her crotch grabbing f***ed around and found out. It's that simple. I feel bad for her husband though. He's gonna be the one trying to make that brat into a normal person and I don't envy it in the slightest. Relevant comments. This is nuclear indeed. More because of the fallout than the blast itself. Another commenter posts, This is probably the best outcome possible for the little kid. I have always considered raising kids to be this way as a form of abuse and it's really sad it happened to him. I hope he's able to recover from this. OP on the relationship between his mother and the aunt. Cousin by degree. That cousin's mother was the sister of my mother's mother. That's the relation and she basically banned anything about her near us when she realized what was the kid her child broke. I'm curious if they meant kit, um, but there is a bit of a language barrier so I'm not 100% sure. OP on the price in the model kit. OP. It's an old kit not reprinted in a long time, so all the ones that are sold now are sold by people that sell them on a big profit. And since most other places don't deliver to Turkey, I looked at a few that do, and the cheapest one I saw was on eBay at $700 USD back then. When you add the border tax, that's around 30 to 40% of the kit's price, and the prices of other kits needed to do the same customizations I had done to the original, puts it easily past 1k. Commenter. In all fairness, it was her kid who was the brat. Aunt just wanted OP to let her feral child play on his computer so she would get a break from him for a bit. Kid decided to punish OP by destroying the kit. But also, while I can't speak for Turkish law, in the US the statute is to make you whole. 
OP had a fairly valuable collector's item destroyed and has every right to having that exact kit replaced. Not a refund for the amount he originally spent, but that specific collectible. And if it's gone up in value over the years, then, well, that's why you should teach your child to respect other people's things. OP responds with, We do have something called replacement value, which basically includes everything needed to remake the thing that got destroyed, including handiwork. For example, let's say you bought a 20k car years ago, and now it's worth 100k. But you also had it very well taken care of, so getting one of the exact condition is 200k. If someone destroys that car or damages it to the point of repairs will cost it to lose too much value, they have to pay 200k plus any additional handiwork or tax payments. OP on if everything is okay in his area due to the earthquakes. Yeah, it was maddening. My city, oh boy, Gaziantep, it's a few small ones every few years, but nothing to this degree. I remember seeing the next building to our house bend like straw and collapse in the middle. It was horrifying. I don't remember how I did it because I had went to sleep only minutes before the earthquake started. But I somehow got fully dressed and picked up both my laptop and my PS5 with any cables or mouses, etc., while my family could barely put their jackets on. It's all a blur. One second, I had fallen off the bed because of the shaking, and next, I was in the car with my family with my laptop and PS5 on my lap. I can't lie, coming back a week or so and seeing our house still standing, then getting the test results that it wasn't damaged in the earthquakes was one of the happiest moments of my life. Update, September 1st, 2024, five months later. Hey, I'm not sure if this is how updates are done in this subreddit, but the storm continued and some people were asking for updates, so here it goes. Link to the original post. Well, the time the judge gave my aunt to pay what she owed me came and went, but she didn't make any payment at all. So we legally had to push the case into legal collectment. Cops went to her house, but she wasn't there. She was in her house, but didn't make any noise. So cops had to leave and get a search permit to enter to look for her. They found her inside, having sold everything and ready to illegally leave the country to not pay anything and start a new life abroad. When they were apprehending her, she attacked the cops, actually clawed the eye of one, causing permanent damage and adding multiple charges to her file. She was taken to court again, this time for more crimes alongside not making a payment in time, the court told her last time. I'm not sure if I can legally list all the things she was charged with, but in the end, she got 18 years and 9 months jail time, with no chance of parole until the 15th year. And yes, since she had sold her everything to leave the country, the court took the amount she had to pay us, recalculated to today's tax numbers and exchange rates, before putting the rest of the money in account that her son would get when he's 18. As for the brat in the first post, I had told that when her husband divorced her, he had gotten custody. Well, the kid's personality was so bad, he took him to a psychiatrist, which decided because of my aunt the parenting, he was showing personality issues. He's now in a pre-military boarding school for troubled kids, which he hates completely. As for the money, I would love to say I used it to get the parts necessary to remake that kit, but I had to put it in a savings account. The government recently changed border tax system, so the previous money became a substantial amount with the new numbers, like hilariously so. As much as I would love to spend it all on Gumpla, I have to think about future, so it's gonna stay in a savings account, getting fatter by the day until I graduate. OP responds on how the money works for the family, put an account for Aunt's son. Since she got 18 years, her son will be 18 before she's out. That's why her son will get access to that money before her. But, for example, let's say something happened to her kid and he never became 18 years old, she would get access to that money when she gets out of jail. That's what our lawyer told us on how that whole thing works. I might have explained it a bit wrong, I'm not a lawyer and my knowledge about laws is just, don't do these things. OP clarifies on how the money is being accessed once a child turns 18. It doesn't work like that, but since she had sold her everything and liquidated them, all she has to her name is that money. The rule is that in case she doesn't live long enough to be let out of prison, either from a sickness or something else, it changes by case to case. Not all cases get this treatment. A lawyer can explain this better, but I guess this was made because she had a heart attack a few years ago and that was in her medical records. It's not the norm, but the outlier. Honestly, I can't even imagine throwing your entire life away over a thousand dollar gun kit. Like seriously, just pay it out. Your child broke it, it's on camera. Like, why wouldn't you just make it easy? Like, is your pride that much that you would rather liquidate your entire goddamn life and flee the country rather than just help him get a gunplay back that your child broke? And look, like, yeah, it's nerdy. If you don't understand, that's fine. But I like Warhammer. I like Warhammer figures. I like painting them and building them. I would be heartbroken if someone grabbed one of my Imperial Knights and chucked it at a wall like a hamster in a PetSmart. 
Yeah, I'd be pretty scared too. Granted, an Imperial Knight is not a thousand dollars, but they're still pretty pricey. See, but at the same time, I say all that, but the idea of someone going through the legal system and burning their entire life down out of some sort of twisted sense of pride is not an unfamiliar concept to me. Some people really just do. It does really suck, though, that, you know, he's not going to be able to rebuild that Gunpla, but on the bright side, he is at least doing the smart thing about it and saving it. And hopefully he invests it in a way where it'll grow slowly and he'll be able to access that money with even more teeth to it. And that'll be, uh, that'll be really good for him. That's exciting. While you can't win every day in life, sometimes it's good just to look at the days you can win and appreciate those for what they are. This collection is gathered by Star Dragon Fruit 0813. Sometimes I envy the illiterate, is their tagline. The original OP is Aggressive Mail 4762, and it's mail as in like what you get delivered. And it was originally posted in True Off My Chest. There is some content warnings for animal abuse, death of a family member, physical and emotional abuse, and drug abuse. The post is ominously titled, There's Something Wrong With My Wife. Posted July 20th, 2024. I'm posting here because my wife does not use or even really know what Reddit is, and I can't speak to anybody else but my therapist about it. I've tried asking friends and family, but none of them understand the gravity of what I'm saying, honestly. I'm a 37-year-old man, and my lovely wife, 36, and I have little to no problems with each other. However, upon noticing little things that are mounting up to a rather terrifying level, I'm not sure I can ignore this anymore. She's a great person. She's done so much for me this whole marriage in respects that I do not want to have after a rather traumatizing experience that I don't need to get into, and she does little things that shows she listens and cares about me, and I do the same for her. I want to stay with her because we've been married for 10 years now and she's all I know. But lately, I just don't know what's going on and why she's acting the way she is. The first notable time was when we found an egg on the curb. We assumed it was from our neighbor, given that they have chickens and maybe an egg rolled out or something. Without a second thought, my wife stomped on the egg. Now, I would have been fine had it been an infertile egg or a cooked egg without anything. But the entire fetus was seen, and I threw up. She laughed, saying that it was funny, and at least the neighbors don't have to worry about another chicken. I told myself that it was just an egg, and she had no idea that there would be a fetus in it, but her reaction afterwards rattled me. I brushed it off because, like I said, I love her. Maybe that's stupid, but I do. I really love her. But the things continued, and my love for her is wavering. Some notable things I remember were stated below. We have a dog. We'll call him Butter. Butter is the most calm dog in the world, and housebroken and well-trained. However, one time, he was very sick and irritated, and he went number two on the carpet. My wife screamed at Butter. Screamed! I told her to stop because the damage was done already, and Butter is a dog who is sick. I cleaned the carpet, and she never blew up at Butter again. But it rubbed me the wrong way, how mean she was to him. I mean, I understand that she was frustrated, but Butter started crying and trying to give her pot, and she kept screaming at him. My mom passed in 2020, natural causes, but I was very close with her and took many years to accept it. I keep her favorite bracelet on a table with family photos of her and me. One day, it was missing, and I had a panic attack. The bracelet was made by my mom's grandfather, and she wore it every day. It was a part of her, but when I told my wife, she told me that she sold it. I, I sobbed. I wasn't mad at her, just devastated. But soon after, the bracelet was back on the table and I asked her about that. She started laughing and saying, you should have seen your face. Hell, when we were gardening, I noticed I dropped my keys. She was grouchy since it was hot and she was planting flowers since the morning. When she found them, she threw them at my face and it cut my nose. She felt horrible, but that reaction threw me off. One time after work on Halloween, I was feeling particularly depressed for no reason. I don't blame her for this, but she played a prank on me and jump scared me, something we do every Halloween. I started crying and having a breakdown because it was kind of the last straw for me after my shift, and she laughed and just kept laughing. Then we went back to the living room and watched TV. One time on Facebook, we found out that a classmate had been in a car accident. I told her and she shrugged, saying that she didn't really know her, so it doesn't matter. It's okay for her not to care about the victim, but the poor girl was heavily injured and my memories of her from school were pleasant, but she genuinely didn't deserve what happened. My wife and I love horror. We're horror fans, but I cannot stand violence against animals. It, it disturbs me. So when we put on When Evil Lurks, as you can imagine, I threw up. 
The kicker is that she has seen it, but wanted to watch it with me since she loves it so much. I mean, I'm, I'm happy she loves it, but I would have appreciated a warning, which I vocalized. She shrugged it off and that was that. That's a few, but the worst of it happened just yesterday. I tried my hardest not to say anything, but it might be my last straw. I was cleaning up our room and my wife was at work. I found a journal buried underneath the mattress as I was swapping sheets. For some reason, I opened it and realized quickly that it was my wife's diary. I would have put it back if I didn't see the words on the page. I was horrified. She wrote that when she was driving, there was a line of geese crossing the street. Annoying, yes, but the thing you're supposed to do is wait. My wife wrote that geese are a useless species, so it shouldn't matter if a few get run over. Yeah, she just ran over two geese on the road. A again, I was horrified. I know what people will say, so I'm going to answer a few questions. I love her. I recognize that sometimes her behavior is unacceptable and concerning. I recognize the concern, which is why I'm here in the first place. But you all have to realize that for the past 16 years now, she's been my world. We dated for six years before getting married, and it's been 10 years since our wedding. In those 16 years, I've witnessed her go through horrific things, and she's witnessed the same. It's hard to sum up those 16 years, but it's difficult, and I'm already saying too much. I noticed the change over the past three or so years. Even then, in the moment, I didn't see it as an issue until reading that little journal entry. I can't just leave her, but I can't act the same around her after finding that out. I realize that I need to confront her about what I saw, but truthfully, I'm afraid. I never knew it was something she was capable of until I read it and started putting pieces together. Whatever is going on, I don't know what to do with it. She has a therapist and so do I. She seems genuine, but I don't know what to do. Knowing that she willingly killed an animal without any remorse. Honestly, I just don't want to leave her. I met her young and all I know is her. She's seen me through the most vulnerable parts of my life and vice versa. Her family and my family are basically intertwined. We all love each other. She's basically been there longer than when she hasn't. If I have to leave her, I think that will be it for me. That'll be all I have. I'm 37, which isn't old, but not desirable either. I don't even know why she had a crush on me because I personally don't think I'm desirable. I don't even know if this post will make sense. I don't know if anyone will take the time out of their day to read my struggles. My therapist is on vacation, so I can't tell her yet. I need somebody to talk to because everybody that I'm telling brushes it off since she's a very sweet person to them. I just want to fix this. Edit answering some questions. I said she's witnessed horrific things. I mean that a family member of hers has passed and one of our mutual friends passed as well, but this didn't happen until months later. We have no kids. I had a rough experience and I won't delve into that. That made me realize I'm asexual and I will ask her soon. Keeping her keys XVX and massive, massive content warning for this one. I will be super honest with you. I was married for nine long years to someone just like your wife. The last straw, one of my cats being beaten to the point of her face being so swollen that one eye was shut for a week and she didn't get out of her hiding spot for three days. Urine and feces in the corner of the closet. I guess she couldn't bring herself to make a run to the litter box in case she would encounter him. I was out the door in a week. It took everything from me. But I knew this would escalate. Don't wait too long, OP. This sounds like a psychopath or covert narcissism. Be safe, take care, and please confide in family members or friends you trust. Let people know what's going on. Edit. Put a French word by mistake for covert. We say, oh God, forgive me. Pervers narcissic for covert narcissism. Riveria Fantasia. You have a low self-esteem. That much is obvious by the way you write up and describe yourself. That's why you want to stay with a woman that has no empathy, takes pleasure in animals being harmed, even killed. And while this would normally be unnerving and freak someone out, you seem key to turn a blind eye. People who harm animals and take pleasure- I don't agree with that, hold on. They aren't turning a blind eye if they were this reddit thread wouldn't exist. They're stressed and freaking out because 16 years of their life might be a lie. I, I don't agree with the sentiment of this comment at all, but let's keep going. People who harm animals and take pleasure out of it start with animals, but it graduates to human beings. I'm so glad you don't have any kids with her. You have said you don't want to leave her, and strangely, you seem to believe that at the age of 37, you're on the shelf. You talk about families being intertwined, and you've known her for years and years. So what? People get divorced after years of having- oh my fucking god. Oh my- That one gets under my skin on a personal level, but I'm not gonna dive into that. 
People get divorced after years of having enmeshed lives. Mutual friends, shared assets, children, pets, etc. So what if you share these things or have been together for years? Is that reason enough to ignore and turn a blind eye to what sounds like psychopathic behavior? I don't think this person's ever been in a situation where they have a partner that's very controlling. There's more. She seems genuine and she has a therapist. Well, she's very aware of how she comes across and she wants you to remain in the marriage so she can continue to manipulate you. So of course she can do all the right things and come across as cooperative and reflective. She's not silly at all and she knows exactly what she's doing. She hasn't become this way. Her mask slips every now and then, but she puts the mask back on to keep you where you are, exactly where she needs you to be. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm telling you, you don't know your wife like you think you do. I have a lot of personal issues with this comment that I'm not going to dig into because I just removed about five minutes worth of recording explaining something that, honestly, I'm not sure if I'm ready to publicly explore yet. But if I'm going to try to condense this as thoroughly as I can, this kind of language can, and in my case, has, led to people only doubling down on a situation that's not good for them. And the reason why that doubling down can happen, at least in my experience, is that in the process of someone trying to ask for help or reach out for advice or something, comments like this where you blame them for turning a blind eye makes them feel like they're being blamed for the situation they're in. You get put in a situation where you choose between a hardship that's unfamiliar, that's being told by someone who's berating you for it, or an evil that you know how to navigate and handle and at least for the time being, keep safe from. I understand they are trying to help, but this, the way this comment is structured has more potential to do damage than good. And I can only hope that I explain my point of view enough to where it can at least make a bit of sense. Anyways, OP responded to this comment, I just don't know what changed. I don't. That's what disturbs me. She wasn't always like this. OP would later post an update August 13th, 2024, answering some concerns. Thank you for your comments and time. I've had a long month and there's a lot to say, but I honestly cannot stress enough how much your support and words, harsh or not, mean to me. I'll say what has been on my mind lately, but if anybody just came for this, here it is. I'm leaving my ex-wife, Anna, and we're still living together as I pack my things. I'm not really scared of her anymore, so that's her name. I sat down and had a conversation with her. Everything I wrote down and posted here was copy and pasted from Google Docs. I left some details out since they were identifiable for both Anna and I, and I showed it to her and she blew up at me. I understand why she was angry. I did share information about our marriage and life on the internet. Her emotions were reasonable, but I started to get very irritable. She listened to the word vomit that just spewed out. She didn't interrupt me or yell at me because I think she realized in that moment how badly it was all affecting me. I begged her to just hear me out and surprisingly, she did. She admitted to me that she also recognized that she was changing and told her therapist about it. Do I believe her? Not really. She said that she's been scaring herself and that she's been having anger issues flaring up that she's noticed. And as some of you predicted, she didn't want to give sex up so she cheated on me with some guy she met at her job. Honestly, by the time she explained herself, I didn't care because I don't. With everything that has happened, this was the least shocking. I asked Anna, genuinely, if she loved the man she met, and she said yes, which hurt, but also didn't seem like a surprise to me. I told Anna that if she didn't love me, I can divorce her and we can figure out the separation and home situation. She agreed far too quickly, but I was so emotionally exhausted and done with her shit that it didn't register how little she valued the marriage to just toss it out like it was nothing. I just told her that for the next guy, she needs to get help. She agreed that she would check herself into the hospital. Some of you suggested a tumor, but that wasn't the case. Her explanation was that the other man got her into drugs. That's all I'll say on that matter because it's all she told me. At this point, I don't even care what the reason was because the impact was the same. Honestly, I'll forever kick myself down for not recognizing any warning signs sooner. It should have never gotten to the point that it did. And while it may not be my fault, I'm haunted every day by the thought that I could have been smarter and stopped her from doing everything that she did. When I say that she wasn't always like this, I mean it. She didn't give a specific date from when the affair started, so I can't pinpoint it to an exact event that happened. I miss the woman she used to be, the lovely girl I've known for almost two decades. I know this was something that had to be done, but no matter how many times I tell myself that, it doesn't make me feel any better. 
For those wanting to know, Butter is safe. He's a good boy and he's staying with my sister while I pack up to leave. My wife never physically hurt him, but she has yelled at him a few times. It hurts not having him here all the time since my sister's house is 30 minutes away, but he's safe and I actually see him tonight. I also inform my family about the situation. I didn't want to, but I knew it was necessary. They understand and apologize for their brushing off of the situation, but to be fair, I downplayed it, so that could also be why they didn't see it as an issue. Her family knows we're splitting as well. As for me, I don't really have friends that are available that often, so I've spent most of my time alone in the house and thinking to myself. It was our house at one point. I remember when we first bought it and how excited she was. <sighs> my best friend and I are going to eat out together, so that's something to look forward to. And she still admitted. I don't hear from her because they take your phone away at the hospital. I hope she can recover, but after everything that my therapist, family, best friend, and you guys have said, I can't bring myself to stay with her. Breaking it off felt like ripping my own arm off. I was devastated and still am. She seemed distraught as well, but I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't think she doesn't care about me. I think there's still a part of her that still cares, but maybe I'm wishfully thinking. Even through everything, I can't be mad at her, but I know loving her isn't good for me. Is it wrong to forgive her? To see everything from her side? It hurts. It really does. I don't know anything but her. It feels like my life is over even though it isn't. I don't want to date again, but I just want to connect with other people. It didn't click how isolated I was until I left. And I... <laughs> this is hitting a bit close to home. And I realize now that she's at fault for my lack of communication with anybody. If I had to conclude this jumbled mess of an update, it'll be this. I'm going to be fine. It's only been like two weeks, but it's been the longest two weeks of my life. I realize that there are more people around that support and care for me. It honestly was really hard to accept that Anna was a disturbed individual who didn't love me. Sometimes I still convince myself that she does, but everybody around me states that she doesn't, and I'm coming to terms with this. It's progress. I've spent more than 16 years with this woman tormenting me, and I have a warped perception of... <laughs> Man. <sighs> I have a warped perception of reality. It truly is not easy to experience any of this, and honestly, sometimes I want to come back to her. But I know that maybe I can find the woman or man for me that will love me in the way I need to. I'm working it out. In therapy, and honestly, I'm frightened of Anna. But I'm still thankful that she was the catalyst to a new chapter of my life. I learned a lot from this. Mostly what love is and isn't. Thanks. You guys have good perspectives on things. I can't say that Reddit is what fixed my problems, but I can say that leaving was a result of the extra push you guys provided. I wish Anna the best, wherever the future takes her. While I'm sad that the future will not have me in it, I think this was the best for both of us, since she didn't seem to love me and I now fear her. This should be the end of my updates. I don't really see this updating further unless something happens with her. I want to be done with this, and I want to move on. <laughs> Top comments. Not Lily. Please do not look back after this. I think she'll come back claiming she's a better person and so on. This one definitely has some elements that hit a bit too close to home for me. I'm glad that Opie has a support system and they were able to get out. And that's what's important in this, is they are able to move on, rebuild, and figure out the next steps. And hopefully Anna makes the legal proceedings easy, because when you have an ex that when you're trying to get away from them, they drag you back in with legal proceedings, so you're forced to deal with them for another God knows how long. It is... It is a lot to deal with, and I sympathize with that. My only takeaway here that I really want to drive home is when someone is trying to explain a situation like this and ask for advice, especially when it's this tricky, tough love doesn't work. I understand that the commenter was probably meaning it more as a form of tough love of, you know, you're turning a blind eye, so what if this happens, people do it all the time, you're gonna be okay. I guarantee that's probably what they meant, but it's not gonna come off like that to someone who's in this situation. And I guarantee that. A softer approach where you help them find solutions will be infinitely more help. Even just exploring hypotheticals and helping get their brain racking on what's actually possible and what potentials they have for escaping a situation like this will do far more than pointing the finger at them and shaming them for finally coming to terms with things. Lucy Aria Rose. Their tagline is, I'm keeping the garlic. Am I the asshole for asking a customer's kid not to touch something? The original poster is No Dress 9576, posted in r slash am I the asshole. This was originally posted September 2nd, 2024. Throw away because I literally made an account just to ask this. 
I, 24 male, work at a popular fast food restaurant. I've been working here since this location opened, and I love working here. I like my coworkers, my boss is great, and I've never had problems with customers. Until today. We have a self-serve drink machine near the front of the store. Today, a family of three came in. A mom, dad, and their daughter, who looked about four or five. I was the cashier for the day, and dad came to take their order. While mom went to sit down at the benches we have at the door to scroll on her phone. Their daughter, however, beelined to the drink section. Noticing the daughter about to stick her hands inside the spigot for the iced tea, which is separate from the soda machine, I calmly say, I didn't raise my voice at all, they and another family were in the store. Excuse me little one, could you please not touch that? Mom looked up from her phone, immediately got defensive and yelled at me, don't yell at my child, I'm right here, you could have just gotten my attention. Now I get it, stranger danger and all that, don't want strangers talking to your child. However, I needed to stop her before she actually touched it, it's a health hazard. People get drinks out of that and I don't know where your daughter's hands have been. Your entire family just came from outside. She could have had peanut butter residue or something on her hands and the next person to drink out of it would have gone into anaphylactic shock. And I didn't raise my voice, I used a gentle voice, just to get her attention and not contaminate the spigot. I apologized to the mom and explained the above, minus the outside part. She however, isn't having it, and yells at me again that she's right there, and not to speak to her child. Dad is right there at the register, just waiting for this to finish so I can take his order. So I apologized to her again and turned to her husband to take his order. As soon as I turned to her husband, she's back on her phone, now with her daughter sitting next to her hand around the shoulder. Like, am I the asshole? Should I have done anything differently? I've already told my boss and after they left, I still disinfected and sanitized the spigot, even though I stopped her before she touched it. I felt like if I did it while she was still there, she would have had another meltdown. OP is voted not the asshole. Update on the same post, September 3rd, 2024. Edit slash update, thanks for your feedback. While it may seem obvious I wasn't in the wrong, I was doubting myself since this was the first time I've witnessed someone get so defensive over their child doing something wrong. Just the other day, we had a kid climb up on the table after not listening to his mom, but when I gently told him to get down, and did, the mom thanked me. So the other lady's response kinda surprised me. So today is my day off and I just got off the phone with my boss. I'm not in trouble and she reassured me about that. She called to tell me that the mom came back and tried to complain. This is secondhand from her, so some of it may not be accurate. According to her, Lady came alone and tried to file a complaint that I screamed at her child and frightened her. I'm so glad the restaurant has cameras with audio, so my boss played back the audio incident for mom to watch. Boss said she had to max out the volume because she could almost not hear me over the generic music we have playing in the store. After the video played, boss says to Lady, So you want me to punish my worker for stopping your kid from messing up all that iced tea? Because if she hadn't, and she successfully did so, I would have had to make you pay for all the iced tea she ruined. And she would have. My boss is a short middle-aged black lady from the south. She knows how to insult people and make it sound like a compliment. Don't worry, she doesn't use this power for evil. Not to mention, we had just made that tea, so the container was near full. Container holds about five gallons. Boss said that lady got wide-eyed and backpedaled hard on her stance, told her to thank me on my next shift and left the store, then called me. Since she thought the whole thing was ridiculous, and now, looking back on it, I, I kind of agree. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my day off, maybe stop by the store and buy my boss something nice. When I was working in fast food, I only ever had to yell at a child once, like actually yell. I've raised my voice with customers before, but this was the first time that I had actually yelled at someone, and it wasn't even a customer's child, it was the boss's child. The little bat would essentially sometimes wander in the back kitchen when the boss wasn't paying attention, and around with things. And I yelled at him because he was about to put his hand in the air fryer. Thankfully, the boss mostly understood. He came in at first wondering why I was yelling at his child and not the fact that his child is screwing around where we make food. But when I explained, he seemed a lot less upset with me. Granted, this boss f***ing hated me. But I have the moral high ground because when one of the uh, female employees turned 18 and he cheated on his wife with her and then now apparently still lives with her. Eight years later. So, who is, who is the moral high ground now, motherfucker? 
Have you been waiting to try gamer subs, but the shipping cost is just a bit too high because you're not in America? Well, I got good news for you. For a limited time, for like a week, shipping is free if you use code EYES. The 10% discount has been replaced with free shipping. So if the usual spiel of gamer subs caught your attention, but the shipping costs were a bit high, now's your chance. So strap in and strap on and use code EYES at checkout for some free shipping between the days and... Uh, did I really just say that? <laughs> It's September 6th to, to September 13th. Hope, hope y'all enjoy free shipping. Good eyes.